welcome uh, to the NLP fan content, how to get started on YouTube panel. Uh, I am the lost narrator. Uh, I am on YouTube and I do fanfic readings. I do fanfic readings, I do voice acting, I do comic dubs. I'm also known for my bloopers, uh, little silly things like that. Uh, and then these lovely people next to me, we have Magpie Pony. Uh, and what are you known for in, on the YouTube? I do full scale audio drama slash adventure slash comedy productions. I also have a second channel devoted to comic dubs. So, like uh, my productions of Pinky Tales and Princess. Princess Trixie Sparkle. Let's see if I can talk today. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and uh, song covers, ponified songs, stuff like that. And then next to her is Goody or Goody Serenade. Why am I saying her name wrong? I, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> two years. And you've yet to I say know. It. I get to say. Well, I've spelled your name wrong so many times. Well, Serenade. Serenade. <laughs> his name is uh, Goody Serenade. Uh, what are you known for on YouTube? I'm Goody Serenade. I do a lot of MLP reading, um, epic readings, mostly based kind of around like the more the dark. I'm too focused on like dark and comedy. I do a sort of kind of do more songs and stuff. I voice act on various other channels, and um, yeah, Say a lot mostly readings. And then next to him is Thorn Quill Audio Fix. Hello. And uh, what are you known for on the YouTube? I am also a fanfic reader. I primarily specialize in longer multi-chapter stories. Probably my most uh, well-known works as of right now are Raugus's Integration, and uh, I just completed a full cast audio drama of Pen Strokes Into the Deaths. So yes! Uh, and basically what we're going to be concentrating on this panel is all of you in here are at some point are interested in doing YouTube videos. So we're going to be going over a wide variety of different things of how to get started, what you can get started with, and all that jazz. So the first topic is finding your niche within the fandom. And actually Thornquill is going to talk about it. There's so many different things we can, you can do in the fandom. Oh, there, the there, yeah, we're going to do the Q&A after right loss. Yeah. Oh, oh, what was the... Did you have a question real quick? Or? Um, I actually have my own YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Well, when we get to the Q&A, because we were going to be taking questions at the end. Yeah. So we can, we can do all that. Yes. So, okay, go ahead yeah. and, and go. As Boss said, there are so many Oh, there's categories. so much I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> there's so, there's so much. Time an hour. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much, but probably it's the single most important decision you can make for your channel to just decide what category of content you're going to specialize in. I think it's a, a bit of a temptation to try to do a little bit of everything, but it's going to help you so much, and it's going to help your subscribers a lot if you... At, the, at least at the start, associate yourself with a certain genre of content and become a little bit more known for that. It's not saying you can't branch out later, but it's a good way to start. So, um, a really kind of one that's getting a lot bigger right now is voice acting. Uh, there's, with all the other fandom projects that are going on, there's a, there's a big need for voice actors, especially female VAs, because, as you may have noticed, not really that many male voice roles <laughs> in this show. <laughs> so that's a big one of uh, some really good content for a YouTube channel for a voice actor or voice actress. A um, uh, really big one is going to be voice reels. Uh, what, a, what voice types that uh, you can do, like if you're a really great Pinkie Pie VA, you're going to want to have a, a Pinkie Pie voice reel. You can do the CMCs, or if you're like me and you can do one of the f one of the four main male characters. You can put that up, uh, and th there are two kinds of voice reels. You you can do uh, lines from the show, but a really important one is going to be improv. And when people come to your channel and they see improv, they're going to say, "Okay, not only can this person sound like this character, they can get into this character's head, and they can react like that character would in in the situation." And I can use that in whatever whatever project that I'm working on. Um, another big one, I think, uh, I feel like this fandom was built on music, so music is a really big thing for YouTube channels. If you are good at singing, if you play an instrument, or if you can, uh, you can mix up music, that sort of thing, uh, that is a really great way to develop your skills and start building a channel and content off of that. Uh, if you can write original songs, I think that's fantastic. 
I love it when I hear original uh, MLP songs. And but, uh, actually, add on to that. One of the yeah. big things is like on EQD, uh, a lot they have feature posts for like music of the day or spotlight music. And if you're creating your own original songs or like with uh, with music or doing your own vocals, that's a good way of getting that type of like uh, exposure. Yeah. EQD is EquestriaDaily.com. Yes. For those who do not know what that is. And um, to kind of tag on both those points, one thing I've noticed is that if in that regard, when you're um, singing like as a character, you are essentially think of it as like a theater performance. You're essentially like acting as that character, describing how you're feeling in that song, and that will only enhance the ability to be that character, channel that character, and improvise. Yeah, and again, if, if you're a voice actor and you can sing, so much the better, and that's that's a great way to learn how to sing. I cannot sing. I don't sing. It's a bad <laughs> idea. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> oh, oh, I've tried. I just won't share it. <laughs> uh, and our favorite type of content, as you may have noticed from the lineup we have here, we all really enjoy fanfic readings. Um, and with, with that one, a lot of us like to specialize in a particular genre of reading. You have adventure stories, you have dark fics, you have romantic stories. I personally, um, like I said, I specialize more in just long stories. I don't care as much about the genre, but I do tend to gravitate more towards either dark or adventure. So that's just one more way you can help differentiate your channel and become known for a specific thing. You think Lost Narrator, you think Dark Fix. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, the reason why uh, fanfic readings are put, uh, mentioned on here is because it's one of the easier um, videos to get into. Because when I first started, all I had was a mic and my recording software. That's pretty much it. Uh, and it's one of the, like, literally, if you just have a mic and that, you can get going. And because, I mean, you can start off. What kind of mic did you have? I, when I first started, actually, when I first started doing YouTube videos, because even before doing pony stuff, uh, I was using a rock band mic. I was using a rock band mic with a little stand and a pop filter. Uh, then when I got into Pony, uh, I upgraded to a Snowball, and now I'm using a Yeti. But we'll get to, we'll talk about microphones and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um, and it's, uh, one other point I wanted to make about fanfic readings is um, if you are uh, a female VA or just a female reader, we need more female readers in the fanfic reading community. I, I will say that right now. It, it, it would be absolutely wonderful. So if you're thinking of that, I would really, I would really encourage you to, to give that a look. You don't have to do 1,000 word stories like I do. In fact, that's probably a bad idea to start out with. <laughs> I, I killed Beauty's sign. Wonderful. You're so intense with your explanations. I'm sorry. <laughs> she really wants female readers. <laughs> I, I, it, I think it would be brilliant. Kind of, kind of a partner to fanfic reading is comic dubs, and this is another another thing where a lot of people need voice actors. As if you're doing comic dubs, you're probably going to need several voices. Um, where would you say are some good places to, to grab some comics from? Oh, definitely DeviantArt for starters. I, I, I have my entire second channel is just completely comic dub based. And I know that my partner and I find comics from Pony Comic comics from uh, DeviantArt and those posted on Equestria Daily. The, that's pretty much the basis of, of where we find the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, comic dubs are, are a really fun one to get started with, I think, because they're they're short and you get a little bit of everything. You get to work with voice actors. You get to learn a bit of video editing. You learn audio editing. So it, it's it's a little bit more complicated, I think. But since they're short videos, you can get through them a little faster, and it's a little easier to digest for uh, incoming content creators. You can do pony music videos if you really want to start learning how to edit videos and synchronize with music and fun stuff like that. There is analysis. Uh, things like reviewing the show, reviewing episodes, top ten lists, just um, kind of creating a space to uh, just share what you love about the show, maybe learn from the things that it does well and some of the things you might not have enjoyed as much. Um, analysis can be a little bit of a complicated thing, but we might talk a little bit more about that later. And then I think a really big one that everyone loves are animations. 
whenever a big animation comes out, I, it just it seems like it turns the fandom on its head. Um, a huge one lately was Lullaby for a Princess. Oh, that was such a that, that is a glorious animation, and that's one that's something you're not going to see very often because. For animations, you at, you at the very least need Flash if you're not going to do hand-drawn animation, which Lullaby for a Princess, I think, is the only one that's ever existed. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. Well, it's Lull the only one I know of. Lullaby for a Princess took about two years of production. Yes. Two and a half years. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. With animations, like, a lot of the stuff that we're mentioning, you can usually produce those in about, like, a few weeks to a month or even a little bit longer, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Animations can take several months of planning, of production. Several people. Several people, too. I know that there are some uh, production studios that are only literally just two people to a whole team all over the world that they communicate over Skype. Yeah. So it just depends on how big of a production you want, uh, things like that. Yeah, I mean, just to give you a kind of idea of what this, what the, um, kind of the spectrum of content length versus the time you invest in it, uh, you can spend a couple of weeks on a comic dub, and it'll be about a minute long, maybe, on average. Um, I can, if it's just me, I can put out a hundred thousand word fanfic reading in about three to four months, depending on how crazy my schedule gets and how much I decide I hate sleep. <laughs> what is the biggest suggestion, like how um, Thornquill had mentioned, is to find your, like, what you're passionate about, and don't uh, spread yourself too thin when it comes to different types of, um, I guess, topics, or, yeah. or, or like, you know, types of videos. Uh, you don't necessarily, look, if you look at the, the top tier YouTube channels, like, not even Pony, just in general, you have PewDiePie, he specializes in Let's Plays. You have um, Vlog Brothers. They do just primarily vlogs. Uh, you have Philip DeFranco, who primarily just focuses on giving like uh, the news updates for the day. Uh, each one of those YouTubers, they are over at least. Uh, well, PewDiePie is one of the most subscribed YouTubers on. You know, <laughs> it's forty million subscribers. Uh, but they picked one thing. Oh, is it forty-six now? It's just, it's insane. Um, Let's just say it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, but they picked one thing and they ran with it. They didn't like branch out. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't branch out. I would definitely recommend it as you grow as a YouTuber. But I would strongly suggest if you're consi really considering doing this to pick one thing and run with it. It's also important because people will come to your channel for that one specific thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to spread yourself too thin, then your audience is kind of all over the place and you won't have as much of a following maybe in a video that means more to you than a different one that didn't put quite as much heart in. And it can be kind of discouraging. So it's, you've got to find that one place where people can come to you for that subject because uh, otherwise, you're not going to have nearly as much of a, a response. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so I think we talked talk enough about that. Let's yeah. go to Max Talk. Yay, I'm uh, still in this. What kind of video? This is definitely, it's, I, it's more of a overview. Um, this, I'm, I'm speaking strictly from pony uh, experience here. But my content is very G to PG rated, whereas I know that the rest of my lovely panelists here have content all the way from G to, you know, I guess R in some instances. Yeah, because of the like, so yeah. 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 like with my content, I would say I'm more teenager or adult because of like the grim dark aspects, but then there's also some, you know, comedy with the bloopers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and again, it's that same kind of idea. When when people go to the Lost Narrator's channel, they know what to expect. They know that it's not uh, always going to be safe for work content. Um, so it's, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's where she has found her place. That's where she's comfortable. And I, but I know for myself, um, I used to be a nanny, and so my nanny kids would watch the show with me and things like that. And so I told myself, you know, I want my channel to be something that I can share with them. And uh, I chose more kid-friendly type um, pony-related stuff. Like, you won't hear a curse word on our channel. No. <laughs> That's no, pretty much how I, I mean. There's no curse or, you know, excessive violence or anything like that. Um, 
and that's fine, that's good. And I can kind of put a different side of myself on, on her channel or his channel or whatever, because uh, that's just kind of, so. Vicarious, what's that? Vicarious, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I think that that's, that's also very important to consider. It's like, who is your audience? Not only did you find your niche, say that be, uh, comic dubs for example but there because there are comic dubs out there that are not necessarily for everyone oh yeah they're so, all the spectrum for comic dubs is all over the place it really is so it's like if you're going to be solely comic dubs are you going to appeal to just kids are you going to appeal to adults are you going to try and grab that middle ground with the teenagers? There, i mean it's it, you can't really look at that and say i want to do all comics because the adult bands aren't going to like some of the kid-centric ones and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's about, you have to think of who your audience <laughs> is. Um, that The same thing goes with uh, fanfic readings. I know that in this fandom, there's a lot of very infamous works uh, like Cupcakes, Rainbow oh. Factory, oh. Uh, things like that. And you will find them on those channels, <laughs> not mine. No. Uh, so, but I mean, I know that there are some fanfic readers out there who do, you know, just the the safer, the romance or the comedy or whatever, or slice of life, or slice of life. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. Mm, it's hard to say. I don't consider myself a fanfic reader because I don't actually go out actively looking for other works to read. I write my own stuff. Oh, that's a waste of creating original content. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. That's, right. that's a good thing. It's a segue. <laughs> I, I, you know, and so I, it's kind of a weird thing for me to try and like put myself in that, that, in that position because I'm different. <laughs> well, you, you literally created your own series. That's what I, I think I, too. Yeah. Like, the, the difference between uh, like my content or our, all of our content compared to Mag's, Mag literally wrote her own uh, production pretty much, and then she pulls all the VAs and like all the artists and everything, and then she puts the production together. Myself, Goody, and Thornquill, we go out and find content to then dub. That's the difference. And there, you will find that within uh, Pony YouTube content is that you'll find people that are taking other people's content and creating either dubs or transforming it or doing whatever, or you'll find people that are literally just going out of their way to write their own things or create their own content, like the animations. Animations are completely original content most of the time, but you know, it's, it's things like that. And there's kind of a weird, like it's a fine line too, because I mean, Pinky Tails, which is pretty much my flagship right now, is common fairy tales. Um, Cinderella, three pigs, uh, Goldilocks and three bears. And it's Pinkie Pie telling those stories uh, using herself and her friends. And so it's completely comedy based, you know, and, and um, but then I know that Lost has also written some of her fanfics that she's read, you know, it, it, there's a fine line between what's original and what's not. And I think another thing too is, yes, you guys do pick other stories, but you always give it your own flair. Yeah. You always put in, you know, it's not necessarily about their written work is the fine final say. It's the sound effects mixing, it's the voice acting, it's all of the combination of things. It's, it's a certain, it's your signature on your stuff. Yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind is that when you're starting off making YouTube content, find what make, like put your own little bit of personality into it. That's one of the big key things when you're starting off is that what makes you stand out? So, and it can be a very, very little things for me. It's uh, messing up all the time when I'm trying to do something. And those bloopers are kind of my flagship. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is kind of a tricky thing to, to kind of find your voice in that kind of thing. Another part of that in finding um, what makes you stand out is, find, uh, is either producing your own original content, ambitious but fantastic, um, but if you are uh, going out and doing comic dubs or analysis or fanfic readings, try and find ways to do things that other people aren't doing. 
like with analysis, uh, it's a very big community, um, and it's going to be very difficult to stand out. So you'd have to find some way to uh, present a different voice that isn't maybe out there just yet. And with things like fanfic readings, find fanfics that don't have readings. Um, like Past Sins by Penstroke, there are maybe five to eight readings of that out there. So if you do one like that, it isn't going to stand out as much as one no one's ever heard before. To use fanfic readings as an example, uh, sometimes it might be a matter of, say you want to be a narrator for some of these stories, sometimes it might be a matter of just finding the right um, genre. Like um, if you have a voice for comedy, a voice for horror, a voice for something more slice of life or romance, Another thing to point out here is that, especially if you want to do content related to My Little Pony, it's very important to know what you can and cannot do um, because Pony is not owned by us. No. We are using someone else's content to create our original work and, and our, our parody, basically. So a, a lot of challenges that analysts face, especially, is that they have they have to um, reference the show itself, and oftentimes we'll try to show clips uh, and stuff like that. So you have to be very careful how you approach that. You have to keep in mind uh, the aspects of fair use, transformative art, uh, and things like that, like PMVs. I've seen tons of people trying to do or monetize PMVs, and then Hasbro comes in and takes them down because you so can't hard. do that because PMVs are taking show uh, a pony music video. It's pretty much uh, you're taking show content or stuff from the fandom and remixing it and putting it along with the music. Uh, it's they're great. I love seeing PMVs, but they are one of the oh, this is like it's a minefield when it comes to copyright issues and YouTube because you can easily get your channel flagged for putting up stuff like that. You know, I, for my personal channel, I take songs that are, have nothing to do with Pony and I rewrite them to make them Pony relevant and then that becomes a parody and that's something that, you know, I don't want to say is protected necessarily, but it's, it's a lot more... Oh, because parody, that's the lovely thing about music, is that if you're writing Pony parodies, parodies are protected under fair use. Uh, but yeah. there, you will find people, like there's a perfect example I remember a few weeks ago, uh, Nomaki, uh, she's part of Elite 3, she did a uh, cover of All About That Bass, uh, Sony pulled it, she's still under fair use, it is actually, she's protected under the copyright law, but Sony doesn't care, because Sony is protecting their quote unquote property, pr protecting, because it's not really protection, because they're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> so the best advice is, do your homework. <laughs> Sorry, and now you're just done. the last point here on um, ambition. <laughs> well, uh, don't you mind? <laughs> I, that's all you. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started on YouTube, I knew that I wanted to do a multi-chapter. Uh, it's weird to say reading. It's an audio drama, basically, because it's 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 animatic style there's so much art continually cycling it's just they don't move their lips or their legs you know what I mean? so um but i knew that if i was going to tackle something that large and if i needed to and because i needed to get so many people in on that i had to literally break it up so much and i had to put out little pieces of content on my channel first because when you're trying to work with others especially they're going to look at what you've done to say, is this a person who actually knows what they want, and who's putting themselves out there, who's, you know, and that made a huge difference in the people who decided to collaborate with me. And um, because they, they looked at the songs I had written and the, the, you know, content I had already produced. So don't start out with something huge. It almost never, will end happily for you and, and can be very... Uh, Headache inducing? Yeah! I, this, this is the thing I've seen. I've seen a lot of content producers that have tried to come in, say, I'm gonna do a big music production, musical, and everything, 10 episodes! Only one episode comes out and they stop. <laughs> I've seen that happen so many times. I I did that. I, I didn't, I, was, I, I followed through with it, but when I first started my YouTube channel, I did a full nine chapter reading, 30 minutes long for each one, 
of uh, Summer Ponyville 2. And that was the, one of the worst mistakes I ever did. <laughs> uh, because it was, it was a lot of work. And I would not recommend that to anybody. Don't bite off, basically, don't bite off more than you can chew when you first start off. Don't start, do that. Start small. small. You start want to small. Like if you want to start with like a comic dub or a really short fic with maybe not a lot of music or work put into it, just just to get a feel for, just to get a little practice in before you start moving on to the big, the big guns. And it's discouraging. That's the word I kept trying to figure yeah. out. It's discouraging because you're like, oh man, I'm putting so much hours and hours of work into this. And nobody seems to, you know what I mean? And, and you compare it to other people's work, and it, it, I feel like that's a large reason why these multi chapter productions only put out one episode because they judge that project solely on how it was first received. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that because you're brand new. So, you know, and even if you're not new, I know there's some channels out there who've like, I've been trying to put content on my channel for a year or two years now, and it's just not working. So um, it's still important for those channels as well, because to, to start out small, start cranking out, you know, little pieces of your talent that you can show that will start to gain a following. Yep. Okay, so next point, what to use? Let's get to this, this is gonna be, we're gonna go lightning round status. Uh, so when you're first starting off, uh, equipment, recording audio, if you're gonna be doing any type of voice acting or anything with your voice, like even with reviews, anything like that. Uh, software, uh, there is Audacity, which is one of the free software programs that you can get off of the internet. Uh, I think it's audacity.com yep, um, yep. slash download. Uh, Sony Soundforge, it's a higher tier. Uh, that came, I use Sony SoundForge for recording because it came with my uh, software pack for video editing. And then there's also Adobe Audition, which is like top tier, this is what the professionals use. Uh, if you're starting off, I would recommend Audacity. I still use Audacity. I, I use, use Audacity. Yeah, I we use all Audacity. use Audacity. <laughs> it's free. Free is your friend in this yeah. situation. Um, that would be one thing I would recommend. Uh, Free is for, good. Free is good, yes. Free is good. Especially when making YouTube content. Because of uh, recording for just the physical actual mic that you're going to use. There's going to be a different variation of microphones. Uh, when you're first starting off, I would strongly recommend using a USB mic, and they can be ra ranging from as low as $25 all the way up to $300, depending on what you want with all the bells and whistles. Uh, but like I said, uh, there's snowballs. I know the snowballs are really, really cheap on Amazon. Uh, they're very, very reliable. Uh, there is the Blue Yetis, which is something that I use. I love my Yeti. Oh, it's so perfect. Uh, the Yeti is good if you have a lower ranged voice. So if you like, if you notice with mine, I have a very lower, deeper voice. The Yeti is actually perfect for that. But the AT2020, which is also a USB mic, is uh, better for higher range voices, which is what Mag uses. Uh, like I said, it, when you're going for microphones uh, uh, shopping, it would be wise to do your research, compare. There are lots of uh, review videos on YouTube that show you the quality in the actual mic um, recordings. Uh, but that would be one thing I would recommend. And then if you're interested, there are uh, the higher tier mics, which are, uh, how did you say that? I can't, I can't words. So um, the AT20 has their own version of that. There's the Blue Spark and the Blue uh, Bluebird. And you, I think you use the Blue Blue. blue. <laughs> the Bluebird. I can't words. The blue. Uh, it is a basically a professional level microphone that has to have a USB audio interface. Yes. Uh, basically, it is a uh, normal mic jack that you would see, like if you saw the mics on stage, you see a normal mic jack. It plugs into a box that that plugs into your computer, yeah. and that's how you make it work. A little complicated, but if you are serious about getting into voice acting, that would be something I would recommend looking into. Down the road. Down the road, <laughs> not when you first start yeah. off. <laughs> then there's also microphones on the cheap. When you're first starting off and you can't necessarily afford the actual, the mics that we just re recommended. Rock band mics, like I said before, yep. I, uh, I started off with a rock band mic. Rock band, rock band or a Guitar Hero. Uh, I used a Guitar Hero mic, that wasn't good, so I changed to the rock band mic because it actually had a better uh, quality of recording iPhone mics as a last resort. Please. I, I would strongly recommend to not use your iPhone, but I've seen a lot of people do it. I mean, some of the people that I've worked with, they started off with iPhone. Yeah, you did. For the, for the first episode of my pilot series, 
myself and Rachel, the star, used an iPhone mic and it wasn't terrible. You just have to be sure of like where you're recording and how you're recording. Yes, because you don't want to like bring the mic up to your face and then do screaming lines. It's I going would, to sound horrible. I would say <laughs> the worst mic quality of anything I've ever heard is the laptop mic. Oh, that's the next oh, thing. That's what not yeah. to use. Oh, no. So what not to use when you're first starting off, Headset mics. Potatoes. 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 Yeah, we're gonna get to that. Uh, uh, headset mics is one of the things. Uh, a lot of a lot of um, the reviewers I've seen in the analyst community, they use headset mics. But the problem is that they are either putting the mic too close to the face and they're popping all over the place. And, and peaking. Yeah, and peaking. So that would I would definitely not recommend headset mics unless you know what you're doing with it. Uh, laptop mics. Oh my gosh, when we have auditions, Never. we have so many young viewers that send us auditions and they are all off laptop mics and you can hear the fan going on your yeah, laptop. The background, the air conditioning you can hear on. the la fan. Someone's just... vacuuming downstairs. Oh yeah, so all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Yeah. Just don't ever do it, please. No, and just don't do it. And webcam mics, that's the other one as well. Webcam mics, they're good for Skype, but they're not good for your recordings. Uh, and potatoes, because potatoes, you don't use a potato. Uh, that's the joke. Uh, I think Pinky Rose is like, don't record with a potato mic. She's, she sells potato mics. If you want to get one, go to no. potato. <laughs> That's a joke. Just to not to use them. Shh. It's a novelty item. Uh, uh, so, and then pop filters. Uh, oh. Uh, I was going to say really quickly, never yeah. play music like off your phone in the mic. Either. What was That's that? That's the worst. Like, playing music on your phone into the mic. Oh, that is the worst. <laughs> actually, I had to do that once for a sound effect. So it actually worked for that, but what? not for what? I didn't do that one. Yeah, yeah, I did that one. Right. Right. So, uh, and then pop, I'll get to the wise minute. And then pop filters. That's one of the big things. When you're first starting off, uh, you can either buy a pop filter off Amazon for like eight to eleven bucks. It's a basically it's a round circle with a nylon um, covering on it. Or you can get the metal great ones. I actually have a metal great one on my Yeti. It's really really nice. Uh, but it, it helps you like when you you're saying your P sounds. Do you ever hear those videos where you can hear the p p p really yeah. loud and it just like it's annoying? That's what that that's, prevents. That's what that or prevents. at least helps with. Yes. Uh, is, it, is it also helpful to not speak directly at the mic? But yes. Have, have it like right. It would, uh, if you side. can't afford a, because I know for a while I didn't have a pop filter on my Yeti. Uh, if you position the Yeti, let's say this is the front of the actual Yeti, don't speak directly into it. If you position it at the side and then talk, you can actually prevent that. Yeah. Uh, but I would recommend though definitely picking, or you can make your own pop filter. I have a friend that made one. They're really cheap. Uh, so I that had someone use a sock. So. I know. <laughs> and then, I use a pillow sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I just want to throw this in the part of it. If you want to do YouTube, you got to have thick, thick, thick skin. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You just need to either, like, you need to take them in and say, like, okay, what can I do better about this? Like, how can I? Or you need to bounce off you and you need to keep your eyes forward. Just delete them. Everything is going to make sure you want to stop YouTube. Oh, turn comments off, yeah. Turn comments into just simple comments. Um, and then if you are interested in recording video, because I know there are some people who do the live action uh, PMVs, I've seen that. I've seen a lot of different things with live action stuff. Recording videos, you can use your webcams. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, especially if you're going to be using uh, the the ponies IRL stuff. Oh, I love that stuff. It's so good. But uh, that's uh, one thing I would recommend. Uh, DSLRs, which is actually that thing right there, that is a camera that can record video and takes professional style photos, or your cell phone cameras. But do remember to not record this way, record this yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> because when you upload it to YouTube, you're gonna have those black bars and they're gonna look ugly. Uh, and then also too, when you're doing live action video, uh, mind the lighting, mind your background, and mind your framing. So like if you're talking in front of a, what, a blank background, that's perfect. But if you're talking in front of like a, I don't know, like a, a collection of toys, make sure it's not crooked. Make sure that you're, you know, you're leveled and things like that. Um, and I saw a question back there real quick. Did you? Uh, yeah, I had a question about uh, mics. Uh, would it be recommended to uh, purchase a mic stand further down the road? Yes. Uh, a lot of the mics that I did mention, are mic stands as well, I know you've got one for your uh, yeah. Uber, because you need that. Uh, and shock mounts too, that's another thing too. Shock mounts, they help with, uh, like when you're getting physical or with anything like with your desk, if you're typing, they don't pick those types of things up. So, uh, oh, is that, I think it's your part. Yeah, I think we're finally on your part now. <laughs> that was, that was intense. I'm going to be going over what, um, 
a lot of tips are going over your when it comes out to editing the video and the audio itself. Um, kind of start off with it. Um, well, this is gonna be a little awkward because I was gonna talk. I was gonna call in the order that I usually go on, but I can I can work with this. When it comes to video editing, um, a lot of um, computers that you get, like um, I, I got a Mac, so a lot of things I did was I had to put my stuff in iMovie. Q lost rolling her eyes at me. Oh, and, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> well, basically, what the, the process that I would normally do is that I would finalize all my audio first, and then I would import that audio into whatever video production I was doing in iMovie. Because the video, to be honest, it's it's not super. It was always super important to me, at least. But maybe you have some way that you want to convey, like a video, like Windows Movie Maker. That, it, that, that comes standard, doesn't it? No, Movie Maker is free. If when you're first starting off, I would recommend using Movie Maker as uh, janky as it is. Uh, yeah. But it is free though, and so is iMovie. iMovie. I used well, that for the first yeah. year. Yep. Yeah. So well, yeah, to capitalize on that, like. It's a very, very it's the bare bones of the software, but it works for what you know you're trying to do with Audacity. That's going to be free too. But what's great about Audacity is that you can apply so many different effects to bring out the audio that you want to do correctly. So like with um, uh, like a, a fanfare read, what I typically do after the audio is done, I look for some kind of picture to correlate with that, and just maybe just do a pan effect from here, zooming out, panning to here, because. The main focus is going to be on the audio for fanfic readings. People are going to put that on like their iPod or something when they're going for a walk. Like that's what people say that they do when they leave a comment on my video. But if you want to do something more for a visual effect, then maybe over time you'll want to start considering options for things like Sony Vegas Pro, uh, the Adobe software, Final Cut. Um, I was going to say, for any PMV, uh, most people, I started off doing AMVs, which are the anime music videos. I started off with Movie Maker, and then I upgraded to Sony Movie HD Platinum Studio. It's like a bunch of names. Uh, but it's like the uh, the lower tier of Pro. And that I actually bought that software for only $39. So, And it's actually a very, it's way more flushed out when it comes to video editing compared to Movie Maker. You have a lot more options to work with. But it is, if for all the techie nerds, it's only 32-bit. It doesn't have a 64-bit. Uh, part of it, but that's tasty. the more complicated you go in video editing, the more time you need to com like the more time you need to put aside to learn. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to go in blind or you go in with just basic knowledge, you're not getting the full. Um, you're not getting what it's worth basically out of it. One quick thing: YouTube is your friend when you don't know what you're doing in your video program. <laughs> yeah. I have gone to YouTube. Yeah, I've gone to YouTube. I've typed in I want to make a snow effect in Sony Vegas Pro. There's so many tutorials. Uh, that would be one thing I would strongly recommend when you're first learning your software program. There are lots of tutorial videos on it for any type of specific effect you're looking for. And that's also a great idea for like when it comes down to searching the actual software you might be interested in using. Like I had um, my most recent video uh, was the first one I used. Um, actually, my past two. I was the first time I used Sony Vegas, and. Um, just knowing that there's, just looking at the software, there's all kinds of different options that were just open up to me now that I I needed to know what I was doing. It's so daunting. I learned how to like, I know, yeah, it's very daunting. Like I learned how to like do keyframing and applying effects to like multiple layered um, effects. And it really adds the effect that you can apply with whatever you do with your audio. So let's, yeah. Speaking, Speaking of, audio, of audio, let's go to yeah. audio. Um, Audacity, it is my best friend. I um, actually, my thing with audio is I did a lot of production and performance study in college. It was a very news emphasis based, but my last year we got to focus on like more, like be more free and produce our own content for like our practicums and whatnot. And so it really boiled down to understanding every single facet of audio, because like I said before, that is one well, of the primary things that people are going to want to listen to. Like, they're not going to pay some, maybe if someone's on a walk, they're listening to something, they're not going to be paying attention to the video unless they want to listen, not watch them across the street and then. But. Uh, audio. <laughs> you know, I'm going to watch my YouTube video while I'm crossing yeah. the street. Why not? I'm just jogging all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would, that's grimdark. But. <laughs> but, um. Basically, the key point with um, understanding audio, one of the key things, like if you're recording yourself and you have other people in, in there, they record, bring in with them, it is, one of the key things I always tell people is um, leave about five to 10 seconds of silence at the after you hit record. 
because that way we will pick up, even if the casual listener doesn't pick it up, we will hear like the little background sound like maybe the refrigerator is on or we'll pick up the, their laptop fan and you'll just hear that little and then you can look at the noise removal. There's an option in Audacity to pick up a sample in the noise removal. And again, you can YouTube this, I don't think we have the yeah. slides available, but um, there's an option to like pick out like this five to 10 seconds and uh, pick it out and then it'll, then you have another option to select the entirety of the clip and it'll cancel out that one sound. Even when you're talking. Yep. Yep. It, one of the big things about noise removal is that it gives you that professional edge. Uh, I've seen, uh, even out of Pony content, I've seen uh, audio dramas where multiple voice actors are talking, but they never did the noise removal. So all of a sudden you have somebody talking and then the next person talks zzz, over their audio and you can hear the cuts of when they're splicing the audio together. Uh, biggest suggestion for anyone, if you're doing any type of even reviews or just anything, noise removal is your friend, but be careful with it sometimes because you can't actually overdo it with noise removal. Yeah. I've seen people where if they did the noise removal and the fan was too loud, it washed out their own audio. Yeah. So one big thing when you're actually doing any type of vocal recording, make sure you're in a quiet little, uh, a quiet cozy place, like your closet. That's one of the little Echo is not your friend. Oh, Echo is horrible. So like bathrooms, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Um, so um, as far as like noise reduction, I've seen people like build little boxes and yes. use like, mm -hmm. I think on Jeepus I've seen like egg cart. Yep. I've heard that works really good if you're on a real budget. If you need to use the I, I, I made one out of a plastic storage bin and then I bought like some cheapy, uh, what is it, foam padding for your bed, like a twin size bed. I layered the inside of it and put my mic in. Yeah. That helps with that. What I what I do is like I have like a, a, like a large pill that I, put behind me to sit upright and then I take a smaller pillow and put on the other side of the mic. Yep. Which help that helps like draw in like enclose some of the sound. Some of these things sound silly, but they are really effective. Yes, they're very effective. Uh, so normalizing version. <laughs> uh, that is especially helpful if um, your gain is like way low. I was gonna say because uh, one of the things about nor uh, normalizing and compressing, if those are terms of the best way to describe it, you know how you have multiple voice actors? Not everybody's going to be recording at the same volume. So when it comes to normali normalizing and compressing, it's going to make everybody's audios the same, uh, basically, gain. You don't have to worry about that type of aspects. But it's important to do that um, when, you're, when you have multiple tracks stacking in your Audacity file. It's important to do that for each track and not after the final mix down. Mm -hmm. there, there'll be a very significant difference if that's the case. Because if you're not careful, then you might pick up a little bit of a background noise in someone else's clip that you missed, and then that's just gonna, then all of a sudden you're just gonna hear it right before someone talks. I don't know what he's, and it's not gonna sound pretty. <laughs> um, music and sound effects. This is used for, um, it's, it's not used by everyone, but for everyone down the line on the line on this table here it's it's definitely used to like bring out more of um like it, i one or go on i was gonna say like to, for example how do you listen to uh Gumbasa. he only does narration and voices all himself and he has a voice that really makes that work like it's 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 having his own comfortability and that kind of ties back to what we start off to begin with here finding your niche and your own content. Uh, he doesn't necessarily need to because he, his voice is energetic enough and ranged enough for all the character voices that it can catch attention. But for folks like us, when it comes to, for instance, like for me, if I'm doing a dark fic, I'm going to be talking like this most of the time to set the scene. But if there's no music to back that up to, write, to raise the tension, I feel like that my listener is going to get kind of bored after a while. You just kind of sound like you're whispering. Exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I would recommend for anyone that's starting off on YouTube, music and sound effects should be an afterthought. I would not necessarily focus, make that your main focus, mm -hmm. uh, because it takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. Uh, for myself, I made that my first thought when I first started off. Don't do, don't be me, because yeah. I had music layers and all kinds of sound effects. I would definitely recommend music if you're going to be starting off, but sound effects that can be a very, very, very hard yeah. subject to try and understand and get. 
uh, and plus when it comes to mixing all of that, it's very complicated. But there are YouTube videos, like I said, if you're yeah. very ambitious. Well, a, a key point that I think is kind of to keep in mind there is that that should be the last thing you do when you're audio editing. Like you bring all the box together first, you piece all the um, the narrative and any voices together with the right spacing. And because the thing is, if you need to have like a certain like happen in the song to like at like a certain point of tension, you can still cut the voices out in the final box mix down, if, if that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah. Uh, we, do, we do need to hurry up. Yeah. Have, I only have one point to add to that. Uh, ba background music is background for a reason. Yeah. You almost don't want to hear it in some instances because you're trying to bring focus to the voice. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever in the Pony fandom seen a problem in a video where the background music was too soft. I mean, maybe one or two, but I, I've i seen it usually the other way around, where I've seen enough people do readings where they're talking and all of a sudden, uh, the music's over blaring their <laughs> audio and you can't hear them. And it's, it's that's worse. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a quick little, basically just lower your game, lower your audio, boom, you're done. Yeah. Um, real quick though, uh, because we're running out of Yeah, I'm gonna touch real quick on Melodyne. I'm actually relatively new to using that because as a musician, I'm used to having like, that's used mostly for like, song covers and whatnot. Um, Magpie actually introduced it to me very, somewhat recently because I'm used to seeing like more like a natural voice, but it's more of an, an adjuster for your voice to sound more accurate, which like the cover. It's, uh, yes, what Melodyne is, is it you put the vocals in there and then it will help you identify what note the actual vocals are hitting and you can kind of tweak that. Like if someone was flat, there's just the one note was flat, Melodyne can help you with that. Uh, also, it does a, it has some effects that you can do, especially if you hear those songs like uh, the original Rainbow Factory song, you know, uh, so that that's what Melanine does. It's, it's for singing, predominantly. It's to help, if, it's just little tweaks here and there. It's not supposed to be uh, put everything in and change everything in there. It's just supposed to clean it up make it a little bit better. <laughs> um, and then FL Studio, if you are interested in actually making music for the fandom, FL Studio would be the one I would recommend uh, when you're trying to make original type of songs. It's a, basically, it's a song creation program. Uh, that would be, it would, unfortunately, none of us really have uh, experience with that, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's some YouTube tutorials on it. Uh, that being said, that uh, there's a lot of different, like, I would say do your research. <laughs> do your research for what you want to do when it comes to audio. Uh, all right, uh, this is my topic, right? Yep. Okay, uploading your video. So now you've created your video uh, and now you want to upload it to YouTube. Uh, when you're uploading your video, one of the big things about it is your thumbnail. Uh, thumbnails, they are will get, get your audience attention. Uh, don't make them too cluttered. <laughs> Uh, one thing I've seen with YouTube thumbnails is that when they have one little image and then a bunch of text and you're like, well, that, I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's that, and if you're interested in getting thumbnails, you have to become a partner within YouTube and you automatically get the uh, capabilities of becoming a thumb or using thumbnails. Uh, one thing I'm gonna uh, suggest, there will be people scouting, if you get big enough, uh, uh, multi-channel networks that are going to want to try and have you sign up for their uh, uh, for the network so that you can monetize your videos but I would they will start promising you free thumbnails you can get your cut no you don't need to sign up for a net through a network to get thumbnails or any of the other special perks that they tell you you can get that all through YouTube so I know a lot of people have come to me like oh I get free thumbnails now and I'm like, you've always had that what are you doing <laughs> um, so yeah, that would be one thing I would recommend. Titles, make sure they're descriptive, but don't overdo it. So like with my um, titles, I usually put MLP fanfic reading somewhere within the title. So it has a, uh, basically, yes, the descriptive on what it is. Uh, I've seen other titles where the title is all the way along and it's overdoing it. Uh, but it, that would be one thing that I would recommend is like, you know, MOP in your um, title so that, you know, other bronies can find it when they're doing YouTube searches and stuff like that. 
Um, and views don't come overnight. When you're first starting off, just be very, very um, aware that when you first upload that video, you're not gonna get it all automatically overnight. Uh, and it's not about horse fame. <laughs> um, I'm just, I, I've seen a lot of people come into the fandom trying to do YouTube content. They're like, yeah, I wanna get really big in the fandom. I wanna die all that horse fame. And it's not overnight. It does not, none of that stuff happens instantaneous. You, it's a lot of work, a lot of perseverance, and a lot of tears, and a lot of lack of sleep. <laughs> um, and how you treat others. And how you treat others. Uh, but I, that would be one thing that I would definitely, definitely str uh, strike home. Quick question? Um, yeah, really quick question. Um, slightly off topic. What, what is the difference between a fan fiction reading and a dramatic reading? They're pretty much almost the same thing. I would say uh, a fanfic reading and dramatic, basically, I would, I would love them in the same thing. They're basically somebody who just goes and finds a fanfic off of fanfiction or fanfiction.net and just does a reading of it. And they, dramatic readings, I would say maybe you pull in additional voice actors and you have sound effects and music so it becomes more of an audio drama it's than anything audio, else. Audio Think drama. of it like yeah. an audiobook versus those old time radio yeah. before television, you know, they would have the, the music and the sound effects and all that in there and that's what's engaging. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah. And you don't you don't need the author's permission to do it, right? It would be recommended. Not generally. Not generally. Because most of the time when um, when you're doing actual fanfic readings, uh, most of the time they're actually very excited that you're doing that because yeah. I've had I, when I first started I did ask and then I got to a point where I had asked so many that I hadn't done any of them and I was just like oh we're not gonna do that again so just they're, give credit they're, they're typically very happy when yes. they hear a production of their own <laughs> they're usually very happy about that but it, you know as a safe point and as courteous yes I would recommend asking just you know it's courtesy you know just give credit yeah, yeah. That's, that's really the big thing okay and now thorn quill last part okay so once you've got your video and you've started out, there are a few things that you can do to start to build that subscriber base. And just to tack on a little bit with what Loss was saying about patience, it took me about six months to hit the 300 subscriber mark. And the first three of those months, I got maybe 50 subscribers. So it can be a little bit disheartening. But one of the things that will help with that is keeping a kind of upload schedule. For instance, it's very popular to upload on Friday and Saturday because that's when people get home. That's when they start to relax and watch stuff. And if they see, hey, Thornquill is uploading on Saturdays, they, they might just drop by to see if I've done anything new. Uh, another way you can do that is uh, using other social media accounts. YouTube, uh, for as, as much as I like its interface, it's not really that great for helping people find new content. I mean, how many times have you gone to YouTube and watched a video that no one had ever seen before? It usually doesn't happen. Uh, so what you can do is you can use Twitter, you can use Facebook, Tumblr, submit your stuff to Equestria Daily, see if they'll throw, uh, toss it in the nightly roundup or something, draw a few people your way. Um, and. Uh, you can start to draw in a little bit more exposure that way. And you can interact with people a little bit more, especially with Twitter. I, I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, and a big one is networking and collaborating. So um, working with other bronies, working with voice actors or fellow narrators or... Um, we're not other, scary. No, we're not. Don't buy. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> we're chill. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Part of what happens is that people who already follow them may notice that you've done something with them or you've done something with uh, them. Did I say that twice? Yeah, you're, it's okay, you're good. <laughs> no, no one <laughs> uh, and, and it'll it'll draw them a little bit towards you. Uh, it won't it won't make you horse famous overnight to work with someone with a big name. So don't don't strive for that. I, actually, if I could give a little quick, I used to edit videos for I Love Impossible a lot. I was one of our main editors. I did not get any subs from it. So one thing I can tell you right now is quote unquote working with horse famous people does not get you that. It's no. creating your own content and putting your own name out there that's gonna create your own audience. Yes. But don't knock it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> especially because that last point, and I'll, I'll let you touch on that, but I just really fast. Um, Pinky Tails, I make it a point that every single one has totally new cast members. So I put out a casting call specifically to help people get themselves out there. So while yes, it is a risk and it sometimes doesn't come through, uh, at the, on the same point, don't knock it. Yeah, because don't knock it. Uh, 
it can be it can be helpful. <laughs> Sometimes it depends on the collab artist. Yeah, it, it depends on who you're working with. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of true. <laughs> yeah, and so I mean, a big part of reaching out and meeting new people is to uh, give yourself uh, a level of professionalism about it. Um, if if someone contacts me out of the blue and I see that their message is just nicely worded and gives me the in information I need, like. What, what do you want me to do? What? How, how am I going to be working with you? Is everything spelled correctly? <laughs> oh gosh. Gosh. I, I'm going to be a lot more likely just to see it, honestly, because stuff gets buried. It, it does. Uh, and if I can't tell what's going on, uh, it, it's going to be a bit harder for me. But if, if it's professional and I, I can tell that, okay, this, this person's a little bit more serious in wanting to do something quality and fun. I'm going to notice it, and if you if you if you just treat people with a decent amount of respect, especially voice actors that you work with, uh, just you, you have to remember we're we're doing this for fun, and we're usually volunteering our own time, uh, everyone. So uh, it it just it just comes down to uh, if if something goes wrong or something just. Uh, be as, as kind as you can about it, and if you don't hear back, or if someone has to leave, be gracious about it. Uh, Reputation goes a long way. There are all kinds of factors in other people's lives that can affect what we are doing with our channels, and that may not always be visible. The first person I contacted to do a collaboration with, I never heard back from. And it wasn't until months later that I found out it was because they had left the country. So it wasn't that I was being ignored or anything like that. Real life was just in the way. Uh, so, and if it doesn't work out, if you never hear back, just give it a few weeks out of courtesy, contact someone else, and um, you, you will hear back and you'll start to meet people. Maybe not people you wanted to meet right away, but that's just how it works, and you'll probably build some relationships that, uh, that work out even better in the long run. So, really, the, the most important thing on this is to just it, have fun. Don't take it 100% seriously. Uh, if it, if, and, and this ties in with the schedule too. I meant to say that uh, if you if you hold yourself too rigidly to your schedule and this becomes a job and it's becoming a burden and it's depressing you, feel free to break your schedule. Take a break. Um, yeah, it's easy to get burnt out if you're if it really is. stacking up too much. Just remember that everyone's doing this on a voluntary basis and it's Almost a hobby all the time. So. You've, you've got to treat it like a hobby, respect, you know? Respect yourself, respect the people that you call out. Yep, and exactly. with, on that note, we've just hit our time limit. Uh, yeah, so that would be the strongest thing, is that just have fun with it and do what makes you happy. So, thank you guys for coming on.